Hello and welcome back to the TorontoWebsiteDeveloper.com. I am P.D. Worski, the Toronto Website Developer. And in this third video tutorial on white hat hacking, I want to show you how we can use a tool called NockPy to find uh, subdomain takeover vulnerabilities. Uh, before we do that, you know, let's come over at leanpub.com slash white hat hacking. Uh, this is the book that I'm writing on white hat hacking, uh, which kind of walks through these examples and teaches you how to hack. Um, I've been lucky to have support from HackerOne in doing that, and so there's some content from them peppered throughout. Um, but really what we do is we break down at least 30 examples of hacking, and I explain to you how it's done, uh, and we look at public list disclosures to do that. So with that all said, what we're gonna do is head over to GitHub, um, and this is the NockPy uh, repo. So this is the repo that we're going to be using, and we're gonna be actually scanning my own domain. Um, if you scroll down here, you'll see that there's a pretty good readme in terms of how you actually use NockPy. It's, it's pretty basic, and so we'll just be doing a basic scan, and I'll show you what this looks like. But we're going to treat it like a like a black box scan, so we don't know anything about our target, which will be my website. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to figure things out. So to do that, I'm you'll see that I'm using VirtualBox, uh, so I have a Linux environment, and you can see that I've gone ahead and I've done my scan. Um, before we do that. Um, just going to quickly show you here, um, just cancel that. So if you were going to grab NockPy, what you would have to do is go ahead and let's look for the actual command. Git clone. Oops. Let's look for clone. Right. So here you can see that I would do a git clone and I would actually grab their repo. So GitHub and then the, uh, the full repo here. And so when you do that, it will then... Uh, download into a folder called knock and so you can see here I have a few different files you wouldn't have this I think you'd have the build you'd probably have knock pie maybe set up uh, and, and read me here and so once you went ahead and downloaded that one thing you'd want to make sure is that you've gone ahead the command that I was looking at before uh, you'd want to make sure that you've run sudo apt-get install python setup tools and that assumes that you have python installed because uh, knock pie is a python script and so if you don't have Python setup tools, you'll be getting an error. Um, and you'd probably do a quick Google search to find out that that's what you want. Um, so go ahead, grab those, grab the, uh, the repo, and then you can go ahead and run the setup, I believe. Again, the instructions are, are here. You can see just down here in the install. So what I did was I went ahead and just did uh, Python uh, setup py install. I had to use sudo to do that. Um, so assuming you have that all set up, what you would then do is just run the command knock and then whatever domain you're taking a look at. So we can go ahead and just run that. Um, oops, what did I do there? So what I want is knock pi, not knock, sorry. So knock pi, and you'll see that it'll look up the target, it'll get the IP addresses, and then it'll start looking for subdomains. So rather than wait for that, you can see the requests that I'm going to have set up here. And so these yellow ones are the valid domains for, uh, for a site. So if you're looking for a subdomain takeover vulnerability, what you would do is then take these and start looking at them. So if I copy this guy, oops, I just probably stopped stuff. So here we would look at store.torontowebsitedeveloper.com. And you can see that points to AWS and it's telling us missing key and so obviously things aren't working here uh, that might be something you want to explore but uh, rather than go through all of them let's take a look at this thing uh, support.torontowebsitedeveloper.com so i'm going to go back over here and i'm going to go to support.torontowebsitedeveloper.com now when we go here you can see that i'm at support.torontowebsitedeveloper but it's pointing me to Heroku, and Heroku is saying that there's no such app. Um, this is what you're looking for for subdomain takeover. This happens to be Heroku, but this could be AWS, this could be Zendesk, this could be anything. Really what's happening here is support has a DNS entry, I've gone ahead and created that, that's pointed to Heroku, um, but there's nothing hosted at Heroku. So what happens with a subdomain takeover is you would go to Heroku, and you would register the domain that's actually listed here, 123unicorn.heroku. When you do that, my site, support.tornalwebsitedeveloper.com, will point to 123unicorn.heroku.com, which is your site, and you just make your site look like mine, and all of a sudden, 
you're able to start collecting passwords, tricking users into giving you information. That's what a subdomain takeover is. Um, because we're white hats, we then report it to torontowebsitedeveloper.com and say, hey, you're pointing to Heroku, you have the subdomain vulnerability. Hopefully, torontowebsitedeveloper.com is on Hacker One, and you get a monetary reward. But really, that's it. That's all that's required for the subdomain takeovers. Again, um, you might not necessarily find them. The way that NockPy works is it has a list of these subdomains that it iterates through. Uh, you can find that in the repo. You can always add to that, so you can add your own. Um, and really, what you're looking for is these common words that people use for subdomains. So you see, I've got store. Uh, might be support. Uh, other ones that are listed are things like info, customers, blog, uh, all kinds of stuff like that. But really what, you, what you're what you looking for is a site that is pointed to a third party. And on that third party, they actually haven't registered anything. There are a few of these publicly disclosed on HackerOne. I encourage you to take a look for them. You can use my previous video tutorial that shows you how to scrape all the open reports from HackerOne to go ahead and find those. But that's it for this video tutorial. Hopefully you find it useful. If you do, please leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know. And hopefully we'll see you for the next tutorial. Thanks very much for watching.